on this edition of Check 6 Aviation, the first ribs and the center section go in. Coming up. Welcome back to Check 6 Aviation, my friend. Yes, we are at the stage in this horizontal stabilizer build where we're installing these, you know, the nose ribs and also completing, well, at least getting further along, building the center support section of the skeleton. So stay, pay close attention, pay close attention to this process because this is perhaps the most important step in section eight of the Vans Aircraft RV-10. And I'm going to be imparting some wisdom, uh, some tips and tricks that I learned along the way. Um, if you have any of your own tips and tricks, if you've been through this process, not just with uh, an RV-10, but perhaps another airplane that you've built, then leave a comment down below. And if you should choose to do an RV-10, then Use my builder number down and below in the comments. It's right down there. And Vans will send me a hundred bucks just as a thank you. And it won't you won't even come out of pocket any more than you already have. And if another way to support the channel for the rest of you, if you go ahead and smash that like button and hit that you know, smash that subscribe button down below and set your notifications to show all. That really helps out the channel, helps you know, the YouTube algorithm, to, uh, tells the YouTube algorithm to share this video, share this channel far and wide. So I really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get back to it. Installing the, the uh, attachment brackets here um, is very critical. I want to say that even though that I had pretty much but I was pretty sure that I had all of the holes, you know, drawn or you know, drilled. I want to say drilled <laughs> properly. There was a one hole on one bracket that where the rivet just did not want to go through. Um, so I did end up drilling everything out, or at least drilling out uh, one of the 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 rivets and just starting over and well the thumbs up there just a moment ago says that hey everything worked and here we go with the other the the uh forward spar and i had realized that i had the rivets in the wrong hole there so three of them got drilled out and we're f continuing on with what I was not able to do. Now, I do have a big oops coming up here in a moment. The plans say to use a number 12 drill right there and drill out, you know, do like a, a match drill type setup on one of the holes. Well, that hole was the attachment bracket right there going, you know, for the hinge. So what did I do? Well, I just kept building and I'm like, um, I, I wrestled with the idea of, do I send off for a new spar after making this trip? 4,000 miles round trip, essentially. Or do I just keep building? Uh, I eventually, what I ended up doing was I kept building, uh, I drilled it out yeah, I made sure that it was, you know, that it was to the same size uh, as the um, the bolts. I, I just used an extra bolt uh, and put that in the attachment bracket that way. Make sure, to, made sure it was torqued down, and here we are. See, th yeah, these are the bolts here that I used. I used an extra one, so uh, it seemed like it was the right thing to do and everything worked out. The one thing I wish I hadn't done was use the air ratchet because that seemed to torque down the bolts a little, uh, seemed to over torque the bolts.
Now this is where things got a little interesting. Because remember in the last video, if you, you know, the last video I did mention that you had to do a nine degree bend in the, in four of the ribs, two on the outside on each side and two, the, the two inner, the two inspar support ribs. So instead of doing a, well, I, I, I did get the nine degree bend, but how I did that was, uh, I put in a 99 degree angle on one side and, uh, I basically subtracted, added and subtracted nine degrees to a 90 degree angle. Now, one thing that I would have, I would do different if I were doing this step all over again is I would do the inside the, the the innermost ribs first and that can be easily accomplished without additional help doing it that way um, just basically lay it down the so the cradles are not necessary uh, this is what I ended up doing here basically used three Clicos, one on the nose because that seems to be where most of the uh, pressure is initially. And I, I do have to say that some of the rivets were not sitting very well, which is why you'll see me kind of drilling them out. This was actually the the first, my very first attempt at this. And so, yeah, thankfully, <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it got, it got a little tedious. Let's put it that way. I did end up do, redoing this side, this skin over again and use making use of a skin that I had per previously said was scrap because of a, a crinkle. Uh, it was one of the damaged uh, skins that I had uh, set aside as scrap metal. And while it's not what I would consider show quality, I think the damage it was mitigated enough. I found out that when I bent it, you know, when I bent the, uh, the skin back to except the nose ribs, that everything was, you know, the, the, the crease that got put into it uh, kind of, you know, some, um, well, the crease went ahead and disappeared quite a bit, substantially, to where you could almost not even notice it. So there's that. Got my, my eldest daughter, Serena, out to help me one night I found out I figured out that uh, at this step when I didn't know exactly what I was doing because this was the first skin that having someone to hold the skin down helped out uh, keep in mind I had I still had the outermost uh, ribs in place I think at that point I'm not sure if I no, I think by this time I had uh, drilled out all, all the rivets and was had uh, removed all of the ribs, the nose ribs. But uh, I w the reason why I ended up redoing this completely is because there was a one of the, the there was a couple of areas, a couple of holes where I ended up using a larger than required rivet because I had forgotten to changed the drill bit to a number 40 and it was a number 30 in the drill and so yeah there's that uh, it also ended up cracking one of the, the holes and I'm like you know what this is not going in the plate 
I, I know it's only one hole, but still, one crack is all it takes to require a skin to be replaced. While we have a bit of a break in the action here, just let me once again let you know that if you want to follow along in this process in a more real time manner, then follow us on Instagram. That is where I do a lot of my posting. Uh, sometimes uh, I'll even, or you can even follow us on Facebook too for Check Sex Aviation on Facebook and spell out the numbers, the, the, the word six, it's not the number. Um, because I'll, yeah, I'll do a lot of cross posting in there as well. Um, so if you care to do that, then here is the QR code for our Instagram. And we're back at it for the pre-coat. You know, these are the ribs that I had goobered up that I mentioned that I goobered up in the previous video. If you haven't seen the video yet, check up in the upper right hand corner of this video and go ahead and check it out. And while you're at it, smash that like and subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. believe this was on a Saturday so all the kiddos were home wife didn't have anything to do of course this may have been on a Sunday after church as well one of the things about inventory is that sometimes things get misplaced so I did have to order an additional uh, lingeron for the uh, for the center section, the center support section. But here I am actually getting a jump on the uh, the prep work. These are the tail cone lower skins. So I'm doing the the priming, the pre coat right here. Let it sit for a while. You let it sit. Let the pre coat sit for five minutes. That was a trick that I had learned from my friend Matt, who is an AMP at Envoy. And then just rinse it off. Make sure that there's no residue left over. And you look for the water to basically break apart over time. It's called the water break test. Got a little split screen action going on here. Getting those nose ribs in on that on the new skin. And having a little bit of a trouble, uh, having a little trouble getting that uh, the mushroom set to stay in place. I tell you, that, that very first rivet in the nose, that's the most troublesome. And you, you want to make sure that that mushroom set stays as perpendicular to the rivet head, to the manufactured head as possible. And I found that by pressing down by really pressing down and making sure that the other side of that that nose rib is against the opposite side that you're riveting, 
that really seemed to help. Now some of you may be wondering, why, is, why don't I see any final drilling going on? Well, simple solution, a simple, a simple reason for that is that my kit was produced after Vans had already went to final sized holes. So these are all final sized holes. Uh, that's not to say that I don't have to do any final drilling at all. Uh, I had to do that with at least one of the holes that uh, I had on the, the attachment brackets that I had made. That was one of the reasons why I had, uh, I know I mentioned this earlier, but uh, that's one of the reasons why I had to drill out some holes or drill out some rivets because, well, yeah. Plus, when you're priming, sometimes the primer gets into the hole and makes it a little bit uh, narrower than it, it originally was. You can see by the top, you know, the uh, left side of the screen, that this is the top right hand side of the horizontal stabilizer that I'm doing right now. Because you, you want to, the, the plans call out for you to, uh, there's some, there, there's a difference in the rivet pattern between the top and the bottom in terms of some of the holes are not dimpled on the top and that's to accept the the fairing uh the the you know for the um you know, the kind of like the the shoe what is it? It, it it is a fairing yeah i know it's a fairing definitely is a fairing yeah definitely especially on wednesdays um <coughs> or especially on sundays as i record this uh, because it is Sunday, May the 5th, as I record this voiceover portion of this video. So, um, but anyway, that gives you an idea of how far in, behind in video production I am. All of this was shot between uh, March 24th up till about April 10th. But I've got enough done where I should be able to get... Uh, the rest of this done and get back outside and finish up the horizontal stabilizer finally and then start the next section is working on building the elevators but anyway yes there, there's a couple of holes that you don't dimple that you leave open as they say on the top and that's to accept the the fairing for the that goes on top of the horizontal stabilizer into the vertical stabilizer. And as we put in the center skeleton, as we build that first, you know, see the 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 spar is so long because my workshop is only 16 feet long, uh, and the spar is 11 and a half feet long that I had to make sure that I had the right the right side of it because the attachment brackets face downward and the attachment brackets go on this particular spar that I'm working with here so that's why it, it's helpful to decide which one which side because the the rivet holes are exactly the same on both skins the difference is that which holes are not dimpled determines which side of the uh, uh which which side 
becomes top and bottom. So you want to make sure that the attachment brackets face to the bottom. And what I did, I, I goofed here by trying to build the center, the center skeleton inside the cradle. But then I remembered Jason Ellis's video when he was at this step. And I'll put a link to that video up in the corner here where he built the center section as the plans say because I'm skipping around a lot and wasn't really paying that great of attention and then just dropped it in and I come to that aha moment here in a little bit So one of the things that you can look forward to in the next video is an additional camera angle where it'll show a lot more of the, the action that's going on. I still have the overhead like I do on the right, but I've got an additional camera angle that is not mounted on the wall, it's mounted on the workbench. So I can get an up close and personal view of what is actually going on. See, I'm trying right here to, you know, I know this is the way it goes, but I'm just going out of, st out of step here. If you notice on the right side of your screen, And then I'm like, hmm, this doesn't seem like it's going to work. At least I think I'm getting to that point, that, that realization. I'm just going off of the drawings at that point. Yep, there's the realization and me taking out everything to say, hey, wait a minute, I think I need to uh, do something a little differently here. So we're almost done with this portion of the build, or at least for this video. So I want to thank everyone for taking the time to really follow along with this project. And y'all are the best viewers on YouTube. But I just got to say that, you know, I, I really appreciate all the, the kindness that everyone has shown because, well, that's what the aviation community really is. Tips, tricks, I welcome them all. Uh, you know, the I, the one thing I got to say about aviation and especially the Vans community in particular is that y'all have been so supportive. You know, to you know, accept a newbie like myself. Yeah, uh, this is basically just a humongous aviation erector set. That's the way I look at it. But it's very detailed and it has a lifelong purpose. And we're getting into a lot of lingerie yoke changes here because, well, anyway, that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. Peace.